All right, hello everyone. How are you? Thank you. I hope you were able to still make it here to the live stream. Um, had to uh, reschedule there at the last second there. I apologize for that. Um, try to give you guys some more notice there about that. But here we go. Our last video here starting with number 14 on our trek here. All right, little energy to keep us going. Zevia tea, not sponsored, right? I just love this uh, zero calorie uh, caffeine sweetened black tea here. How's everyone doing out there in cello land? Yeah? I am doing dandy. Everyone is traveling. I'm here by myself. Um, everyone is traveling off doing great musical stuff. And I'm here doing musical stuff with you guys, which is what I love. Love doing it. Okay. So here we go. Dun dun dum. Last one here of book one starting with etude right Oops. against the wall over here let me scoot just a bit dun, dun, dun. forgive me sorry about that Let's make a little adjustment there that's better if you're following along here's an a We're going to start here with etude. Hopefully, you've been doing the tonalization here on page 19 and the C major scale to get up to speed. Um, also, we're going to change the tempo a little bit. So, you know, with perpetual motion, we've been going 105. You really can go a lot faster. You can go, gosh, I back uh, before I realized it was just an impossible task all right we, we like to set attainable goals yes i used to make uh perpetual motion or ask for it to go a lot faster like um 120 130 something like that something crazy <laughs> anyway so but etude definitely should go a little faster than 105 i would think 110 or 115 on the metronome would be a great goal Here's 115, and of course, etude, like perpetual motion, has as its ultimate goal this doubles variation. everything else correct here in the book that 115 should be attainable the other thing remember that we were talking about earlier that I've been talking about throughout book one that's been really on my mind here lately is this you know making sure this finger action is correct okay that my fingers are on the bow correctly that I'm flexing my fingers this is a big part of going fast so right here at the top of etude it says stop the bow after each note okay and this is still a really really important goal to have and i would all i'd almost say this is even more important than going fast so let's say you know if we've done everything correctly here earlier we can at least start at 105 yes
that in there. I don't know where that came from. Sorry about that. I must have been thinking about something else. Okay. Anyway, so stop in the note. Even if you have to go... Sorry, let me... Whoa, there we go. See? So you can see my right hand here. Really need to get a slow motion of that. Catching, okay, and going back and forth like this, right? Fingers are not down out here, right? This is really bad. With them here, with them flexing, grabbing the bow with these flat parts of our fingers. This is really, really important. Now, unlike uh, earlier on in the, the the book here, because we are on every single string, obviously we can't transpose this one. Yes, right. So this one is going to be in C major, and it's going to stay in C major, right? But make it your goal to try to go fast. Um, just like in perpetual motion, uh, you will want to maybe do the C major scale here, the two octave scale, um, with some 16th notes. If you're trying to get up to that tempo of 115, again, use the cutting it in half method, where I start at 115. I won't do the whole scale. You know, two beats worth. All right. All the way through there, but then cutting it in half. And then, and then down to the doubles, just like we want with the final version. had several students now over the years that they're either doing it already in school or in another ensemble and we actually do an alternate fingering here for the C major scale and just go ahead and go off the D string because fourth position I think is just as easy as first position so we do this <laughs> Last but not least here in etude intonation. This piece is very much C major. And what makes it so wonderful and beautiful is all of these ringing tones in different places on the instrument, yes? I have a ringing tone here, second finger on the A string, ringing with my C string, and fourth finger on the G. Always make sure that these four finger ringing tones that I'm hitting them every single time. All right, and that's what makes this piece really ring out. All right, and the instrument just constantly ringing during this. And speaking of C major, let's go ahead and talk about. Happy Farmer, because we need some extra time here for Happy Farmer to talk about. And I do have, I need to make sure I link these up in the description. I do have some exercises, Happy Farmer exercises, um, some scale exercises written out that I always give students to go along with this to help teach the hooked bow. Because the hooked bow is very different. And of course you need la metronome here. Let's go down to... I'm going to go way slow here. I'm going to go down to 70. And of course, I love my Seiko metronome because it will do subdivision so easily. So we have here one and two, one and two, and three and four, and yes. Why is the subdivision important? The subdivision is important so that, actually I probably didn't even need the eighth notes, so that I can feel the eighth note division. All 
right? And if you do need the subdivisions, it can really help. The metronome is so important for this. Now, this is such a huge teaching point here in Happy Farmer for me because this is going to come up over and over and over again in our playing, in our learning. This dotted quarter eighth note represents a three-fourth, one-fourth division, right? We have three eighth notes during the dotted quarter note, okay? And then we have the the one-eighth note beat that's hooked in there, right? So that's what we mean when I would say three-fourth, one-fourth to make up these this these two beats here in the measure. Why is that so important? Later on, when we're using this kind of rhythm to learn to go fast, or when we get to witches dance, all right, in the next book, that we're learning how to do this three fourth one fourth division, so we don't turn into a triplet, right? Because the the thing that everybody wants to do once it starts to go faster is this. <laughs> That's a triplet, dun 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 dun, and we don't. It's that's not what's written, right? Mr. Schumann did not write a triplet. He wrote dotted quarter eighth notes. So what? Bum 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 bum. Okay, which, as I sing it there, takes us to the next practice method that you can use to help understand the rhythm, which is to do all separate bows and to just play them. <laughs> takes a little <laughs> a little proactive maybe go slower you might have to do a little call and response with your student there I uh, maybe I should have a video about that okay so it's another great way to understand just how many eighth notes are there in the um, in the dotted quarter note and again, I think I actually taken the subdivision off in this case and remembering that I go after the click. Click, right? the rhythm so and this is this is these are both equally challenging at this stage of the game the the rhythm and the bowing now let's go back here now because I want to make sure that we're doing the rhythm correctly while we're learning this bowing is where I kind of harp on that first so let's go to the scale exercises here which go like this here's the first variation lots of repeated notes so in the same kind of uh, vein as giving ourselves lots of repeats so that we can think about what's going on as well okay now that's variation one variation two would be all right maybe i can just pull them up here since i'm in wide screen this afternoon if you guys have any questions please put them down in the comments i'm going to share my screen here and see if i can just share them here with you all right and i'll put a link um 
so that you guys can have access to these here. Make sure it's the most recent version here. Give me one second. Whoops. Hold on. How do I have so much stuff open? Hold on. This is an impromptu, an impromptu share here. Give me one moment. Okay, there's got to be a way to do this here. Hold on. I want to share just a portion. Nope. I wanted to share. There we go. Adobe Acrobat. That's what I want to share. All right. And then that's it. Okay. All right. So notice here what we have is. Um, Where's my mouse? There it is. All right, so we have down, down, up, up, down, all the way through. And I actually have both octaves, okay, written out for you there, okay? All right. Then in variation two, all right, just like with our 16th notes in perpetual motion and etude, okay, what we want to do is do less repeated notes, all right? So let's do a little bit of that now. I'm just going to start here again in the second octave <laughs> can see there on the screen a little bit <clears throat> variation three is no repeated notes sure that I'm doing the down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. Whoops. Okay. Now, let me see here. Variation four is just the arpeggio. Make sure you, I'm showing you guys the right thing here. Whoop, arpeggio. Come on. It's down there at the bottom of the screen. There we go. Oops, I don't do a lot of screen sharing during the live streams, forgive me. Okay, all right, so arpeggio there on the screen. <laughs> what we're trying to get to all right because it is arpeggios that we are playing in happy farmer what i would suggest is since you have the arpeggios written out is that you create your own 1.1 2.1 3.1 variations on the arpeggios and what i mean by that is do two beats okay or two two bow directions of repeated notes on the arpeggio like this <laughs> go to right, and then no repeating notes as it was written in number four and this bow direction business can be quite tricky all right so make sure I one thing I always recommend is video record yourself and watch it back so that you can watch and see if you're going down down up 
up, down, down, up, up, down. Okay, there with the hooked bow. All right, because this is a big, it's a big thing here in um, in the Happy Farmer that we want to make sure we are doing. All right, this hooked bow. This is like the one of the main things here in Happy Farmer. Um, also, once again, we see the dot line articulation over some eighth notes. Okay, so make sure we're doing stop, stop, bows. Still, all right. You and this is actually the piece where I was working with a student, and we realized that we were getting a lot more music when we did this. Okay, and what and what we did here on this piece, all right, to help give it some more music was to play a Cole version. Now, if you haven't seen the Cole video um, on the channel, then I will link that up or you can go check it out. C-O-L-L-E, all right, with an accent. Um, pinching down on the string like this. Pinch, wiggle, scoop, right? This is the... Cole, right? A sharply pinched attack on the string. And what we were doing was to do a cole version of the eighth notes in Happy Farmer like this. Really, really slow. Right? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Every note. All right. This ensures that I'm using the correct finger action on the notes. Okay. Whoops, my comments got shoved down here. Hold on. Good evening from Germany. Oh, hi. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us here. Um. String wiggle version, string wiggle version on Happy Farmer. So if you're having trouble really digging into the string, okay, um, getting the string, you know, on the string crossings, biting into the string and getting there fast enough, then I highly recommend that you make up your own cole version. On these eighth notes it will help tremendously all right and it will bring out a lot more music in your playing in your right hand over here okay and of course so we're talking a lot about the right hand again all right because this is everything these are bowed string instruments and we just we have to spend a lot of time over here to make sure we're getting all the techniques make sure we're getting good music making over here in this right hand all right, and of course, it goes without saying that we're listening to ringing tones. Again, we're in C major here in Happy Farmer, like we were in the etude. So I'm listening for the ringing tone here on the fourth finger and on the second finger. Very, very, very important. All right, I'm looking at the time, and I want to move on here because I still got two more pieces uh, to get through here. Minuet in C. Minuet in C, this is a great one to practice by the bow. What do I mean by that? Meaning, to not practice it in the order that it's written, but to practice it according to the bowing. So in measure one, we have down, up, up. The next place where we have down, up, up is measure five. Then measure nine. Measure 11. Measure 13, measure 15, 17, 19, 21, and then I've practiced it by the bowing, right? This is also, I found a great way earlier um, with another student to really work on note reading, right? Because when we're constantly playing from the beginning of the piece, yes, then uh, we're just kind of like, it's like a wind up kind of rote kind of thing. And a way to really test your note reading ability is can you skip around, okay, um, and uh, play it by the bowing, all right? So let's go to measure two where we have 
down, up, down, up. Okay, let's do it again. Then measure four. Then we have measure 10. Then we have 12. Then we have 18. 22. Okay. Then the last bowing is this quarter, quarter, two eighths. And this one's a little different because sometimes we have an actual quarter and sometimes we have two slurred eighth notes. So here we go in measure three. Down, up, down, up. Then in measure six. Down. Seven. Okay. Then we have measure 14. See how it's two slurred eighth notes instead of one quarter note, but it's still the down, up, down, up. Okay, then we have measure again. Oh, we don't see it again until 23. Oh, oh I left one out. Measure 20 goes with the down, up, down, up. Okay, it's two slurred eighth notes. Okay, so that's what we mean by practicing by the bowing. Okay, and then of course we have the big phrases where we have the long notes at the ends of the phrases. All right, you could consider that um, uh, a fourth bowing. All right, but mainly we focus on the other three because those are the ones that are challenging. Okay, notice that we have a mezzo forte piano at the beginning the little dash there means it's it's because of the repeat you play it mezzo forte the first time piano the second time this is a very very common way to do dynamics especially in bach where you do the second time it's like an echo right it's a very baroque thing to do um and also we're kind of getting into as i mentioned earlier in another video learn something new make a great sound learn something new make a great sound okay there's not a ton in minuet and c that's new Maybe some of the bowing. Yes, maybe some of the bowing. But this one is definitely, we're reinforcing playing in C major because we started back in etude. We did some more of it in Happy Farmer. We had a very, very challenging bowing with our hooked bows and our dotted rhythms. And now we just want to make a great sound. Depending on where you are with this piece and in your cello development, whether it should be considered an extra challenge or just absolutely part of what you're doing, there is the articulation at the beginning and the style. Sometimes young students, of course, want to play this way too harsh. I know we've been interpreting this line dot as a stop stop, but I think this is a definitely a time to back off from that, all right, so that we don't learn bad musical habits, all right? We don't want to learn bad physical habits, and we don't want to learn bad musical habits. And so we definitely don't want to make this beautiful Bach minuet scratchy on those up, up bows. We won't tell, we don't want the bow to slide. Like this, yes, but. A nice tone. minuet and C here. All right, here we are. Wow. Whole book here over four live streams. I can't believe it. Never done it before. Uh, over the whole weekend. If you've been here for each one of them, thank you. Wow. You're a trooper. Um, here we are. Minuet number two. Okay. 
let's get down to the big things that we have here in Minuet number two. Right off the bat is this is the first time we're going to perform where we have to learn proper extensions, all right? There's uh, some extension videos, lots of left-hand videos here on the channel. If you want to reinforce that, get some real detail. But of course, I'll, I'll say it here. Remember that when we're doing extensions, and I'm talking about down in measure 23, right? Where we have the E to F sharp, okay? Um, and I just published a video about finger patterns. Here's a great time to use finger patterns. Remember, the thumb has to be behind second finger here. Yes, okay. Always, always, always to do a proper extension. And when we're talking about extension, we're talking about whole step between one and two. Yes? Okay, back here. Now, even though it seems like I'm reaching forward, okay, this is where I am, am kind of like in a hybrid, or what I say, a hybrid thought here. I know some teachers say forward extension, backward extension. Fundamentally, I don't really like that because I want to think of learning things one way. I think it's more efficient to think of the one way to do that and then apply it wherever I need to apply it and not have to think about two different ways to do it. But, you know, it's not so black and white, right? Especially when we're back here in first position or half position where we have to do this extension and my hand might feel very stretched out. And of course, it might feel like my fourth finger is stretched out. Okay. And so it feels like I'm having a forward extension because I'm going from the E to the G sharp. Yes, okay. The only reason I don't like it is because the extension, the actual extension part of my hand is putting the whole step here. So do I have a whole step here or do I not have a whole step here, right? This is the extension. I'm extending this or not. Extended, not extension. Open, closed, right? If I start messing around with stretching my fourth finger. Now, maybe my fourth finger gets stretched just as a byproduct of what I am doing. Okay, that's entirely possible. But I never think of, you know, as a as a as a physical motion by itself, stretching my fourth fourth finger and reaching it up. I just don't do that. Okay, I think about reaching my first finger back. Always, always, always. I think that's really, really important to getting this extension correct. Yes, opening up the hand. And of course, this right here. All right. So I say I sp spend all this time talking about forward and backward when really young players, all right, if you're here in book one, this is the one that really keeps people from doing the extension properly. It's because I see this all the time. I see the thumb behind first finger. I've even gotten some, some comments about this on the channel. Um, and the, the one comment I would say about that is that, um, oh, dare I, dare I say something here? is that I actually saw a video of that person. I won't say who it was, because I would never want to publicly shame anyone. All right, because I do appreciate you guys' comments. But I did happen to see a video of this person playing who was just emphatic that thumb naturally wants to go behind first finger. And then I saw a video um, of this person playing a scale, and it was very out of tune, okay? Um, very, very out of tune, like to the point of losing the tonality coming down the scale. Okay, so... This is why the thumb has to be behind the second finger. It is to keep the hand in the shape and approach to the fingerboard as it is supposed to be to help keep you in tune, okay? To help these fingers open up in the way that they need to so that you can stay in tune. For example, down here in measure 23, E to F sharp. All right. And if, you know, if I really feel like I'm having to stretch out my hand, gosh, my thumb might even get down behind my third finger. This is why I really think about this index finger is reaching back. If you're having trouble, like just the coordination of getting your finger back, if you think about pointing your index finger towards your ear, this always helps students, all right, because they're having trouble and they're wanting to do this. They're twisting and the finger's going all over the place. Just point it at your ear. Look, it opens up. And if your finger ends up on the side, totally okay. Mine ends up on the side back here all the time. Oops, sorry. Get that in 
tune, all right? And it is an up, up bow on there, all right? So that's getting that G sharp in tune. Now, the video I just published today, actually earlier, talking about finger patterns, this is a great place to use the finger patterns to really make sure you're getting in tune. So if I'm gonna use my hot cross buns here, from E to G sharp, but I would highly recommend when finger patterns really become useful, it's oh, sorry, all the strings. And then that G sharp is going to be really in tune. about intonation here before we move on to a couple of other things. These C's how long this is a great question how long does it take my thumb you know um, I don't I don't know if there's any specific amount of time but I do know that when it comes to physical habits okay when it comes to anything that we're working on that's physical we're trying to get our fingers our hands whatever to do something specific that we just have to focus on it. And, and what I've come to realize is that if there's any trick to learning this, this physical stuff, it's that we haven't spent as much time on it as we think we have. Okay, so what I suggest is that you, when you're playing through a piece, whether it's this or anything else, that you pick a certain number of times, say, I'm gonna play through minuet all the way through, or I'm gonna play all the way through two times, and I'm just going to focus on my thumb being behind my second finger, okay? That's how it gets fixed, okay? And actually, I, when I, and, I, and this is getting to your question, is that if you focus in that way, then actually you, you'll find that you start breaking physical habits pretty fast, okay? I would think if you did this every day, if you were really focused on this thumb, that, I don't know, a week or two before it started to feel a little bit more natural, okay? Maybe even less, all right? But we're talking about some really extra focused practice. Now, um, that's, you know, picking a number of times. Maybe you want to really focus on just this one measure, or maybe there's another piece where you have a lot of extensions. You might set a timer, okay? Um, I've talked about this before on the channel where you say, for the next five minutes of my practice, okay, I'm going to do nothing but think about my thumb, being behind my second finger okay and this is a great use of a timer you can do it on your device you can do a dedicated timer um, we actually just bought a new timer in our house the one i used to recommend um kind of broke <laughs> so we have a new one it's actually a usb charge i think i have it linked up in all the in all the videos here um, it's a great little timer and you can put custom times you can do the flip gravity thing where it just automatically sets an amount of time for you um, it's a wonderful little timer and so it really helps us realize that when it comes to this physical habit stuff, all right, um, we just haven't spent we just haven't spent any time on it, all right. And so, uh, you know, what happens is during our practice is that we think about it, and like ten seconds later we're thinking about something else, right? Or you know, the next line, you know, every single line of the piece we're thinking about something different. Oh, my bow holds off. Oh, this this rhythm is off. Oh, this intonation is off. And we're back and forth and we're just bouncing around like a pinball. And what we don't realize is that, you know, all those little swapping every single line, yeah, we've spent like 10 or 15 seconds focusing on, on one thing. Okay, so setting the timer and say, we're going to focus on something for an entire minute. Oh man, it's, it's a game changer to, to fix some of the physical stuff. All right, so if you had that kind of focused practice yeah a week or two and man it's gonna feel completely different completely different okay um, and that's practicing every day of course on it now if you're not practicing every day you know a month maybe a couple of months I don't know it just depends on how much you're practicing and how focused your practice is as far as like 
how long it takes to form a habit like that? That's a great question. Something I've thought about, so I love the question. Uh, all right, so intonation here in minuet number two. I have these octave jumps at the beginning. I'm listening for ringing tones. Are these notes ringing against the C string? And do they match each other? So they, have, they both have to match the C, and they have to match each other. And on the way up, is this fourth finger ringing tone? section there. Now, again, I think this is also a great time to start introducing good musical habits and making sure that we're not playing too harsh on those up-ups. This should be light, right? They don't want to be thin. Remember, we don't want this. We want this. down here in the lower part of the bow pretty much the entire time and also notice I have either staccato right a dot or I have a line I don't have this combo all right because we're going to reinforce this this not harsh bowing right um some new things a lot of make a great sound right a lot of make a great sound the extension of course is new okay extension of course oh you're so welcome you're so very, very welcome. Thank you for the question. Um, the bowing, well, the hooked bowing, all right. Hooked bowing, actually a little easier than happy farm, right? Because it's just two quarter notes in a row. We have the up, up, and they're all up, up. We have no downs, right? Like we have in, like in happy farmer. Um, happy farmer is very new. I would expect to spend a little extra time on happy farmer if I was going through this. Okay. We have lots of dynamic changes. Remember, we always want to think about exaggerating dynamics because if we're not, if we're just playing to an audience of one, Probably the audience out there isn't hearing all the dynamics, all right? So remember, arm weight, bow use, and contact point, really mixing them up. To get to that forte. a cole last thing I'll say here I would also highly encourage a cole version of this piece all right meaning a string wiggle version all right because of all the string crossings wiggle wiggle all right I wish I could zoom in and show you there all right wiggle 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 each note Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. And what I'm listening for with that string wiggle is that I'm hearing a solid sound after I wiggle. Or am I hearing the thin bow sliding? I don't want to hear any bow sliding. I want to hear. I'm pinching down and scooping so that I hear that full cello sound. helps me with the string crossings and really helps me know that my arm is getting to all the places that it needs to okay we made it wow we made it all the way to the end of book one i can't believe it okay four live streams if you missed any of the others go check them out we went through every single piece things uh teaching points things to think about here in all of the pieces it has been my absolute pleasure to do this. Thank you so much for, for coming and watching and being here and hanging out on these live streams. Of course, there'll be more live streams to come. Um, and 
some uh, more detailed uh, videos on some of these pieces. Some of these pieces already have their own practice guides, dedicated practice guide videos here on the channel. I encourage you to check those out. Um, but this was just, I uh, wanted to come live so that I could answer questions um, and be here with you guys and at least have some resource for now to go through the whole book because some of these, uh, most of the book I have not made a dedicated video, dedicated practice guides for. And so wanted to, to get through the whole book here this weekend. Maybe we'll do book two on another weekend over the summer, uh, getting into the, to the wonderful, wonderful uh, spring concert season here. Oh, good evening from Denmark. Oh, wow. Fantastic. We have Germany. We have Denmark. This is wonderful. Um, uh, so anyway, we're wrapping it up here. But if you have a question, if you've just joined us and you have a question, I'd love to answer, love to answer questions here. I have another minute here that I can hang out. Um, things to summarize here while we're hanging for just a second. Something I talked about a lot throughout all the videos here in book one, and that is this, I didn't mention the Cole version stuff um, until we got to Happy Farmer, but this has been kind of a, a running theme here that we're really paying attention from the beginning to this business, right? To my finger action. <laughs> Now, I said earlier with minuet number two that it's important that we learn the proper style and not play too harsh. It might be, though, and I've had this, where we need to play a harsh version, okay, um, in order just to get the bow into the string because we're just not making enough sound, right? Or we're not getting the proper amount of tone out of the cello. And so maybe here in minuet number two, we need... We need a stop stop version. We need a cole pinching down version, all right, to make sure that we're getting the arm weight into the string. That might be necessary. And then later on, we let up on that. All right, we find the happy medium with our arm weight. In order to get the beautiful sound that we're after in the end. Okay? All right. Thank you all. Again, all right, all across the world, I love it. I love YouTube that we can hang out here uh, across the, the globe. All right, loving that. Okay, all right, take care, everybody, and uh, I will see you on another live stream very soon.